Hello and welcome back to Radio 2. So in the previous lesson, we ended it off with looking at demos, speaking about talk radio, and if you wanted to be, be in talk radio, how you can work towards being a presenter in talk radio, so making that shift from music radio to talk radio, and then we looked at creating a demo, how to create a demo. And we spoke about it from the other side, from the program manager side, when you get all these demos, okay? Um, and then I gave you a link for some more information if you wanted to go and look at it and at air checks and just more demo info overall. So today what we're doing is that we're starting with a new section, okay? Still module 2.12, but we're starting to look at music compiling. And this is part one of six, so this will be six parts. And from music compiling, we're going to look um, at music formats, the different types of music formats, music formats in South Africa specifically. And I think you'll be quite surprised to see how the average South African radio station fits in there. Okay, but first and foremost, let's chat um, music compiling because it's really important for a radio station. So why is music so important for a radio station? Because beyond just the songs that a station plays, music also shapes the, the tone and the energy of the radio station. A lot of times you can simply tell by listening to a radio station what um, the demographic of the age group is that the station is targeting. Why? Because the station is setting the mood. So as much as you stay um, because of presenters, you start listening to that radio station because of the music. And understanding how important music is for radio stations should help you to understand how critical the role of a music compiler is for a radio station. I think a lot of times what happens in this industry is people think they want to be a program manager and they tend to overlook the um, music compiler and just realizing how important this position actually is within a radio station. So what does a, a music compiler do on a day-to-day -day basis? Basically, they schedule the music for the radio station. So they source music from record labels um, and on occasions they meet up with record label representatives um, and music sampler distributors and they chat about releases and partnerships and they really need to understand the core target market of the radio station in detail okay they need to go out to events and and try to discover the sounds and they need to be on the ground in between the listeners to figure out exactly who they, their listeners are and what exactly they are listening to let's turn to our textbook um, so for today's lesson, we're back to Next Level Radio on page 171 up until 173. Okay, so let's start by looking at a little bit of background. Where does music compiling come from? Because it's quite easy to say that what I do as a music compiler for radio station is I simply schedule the music. Can I just put the music on anywhere where I want to put it? Can I just simply slot on any 100 songs that the average listener would listen to? Is there something behind this, a specific way of, um, of scheduling these songs? The concept of compiling a set and limited playlist developed by researchers and music compilers was born in the United States in the 1950s. The format of Top 40 Radio was the brainchild of Todd Storrs, who owned KOWH, a radio station based in Omaha in Nebraska. Storrs noticed that jukeboxes, um, that jukebox users regularly selected a relatively small number of songs from a much larger, larger collection that offered more variety. Based on this insight, he decided to play the current top 40 songs in heavy rotation, as opposed to a long list of different songs that were seldom repeated. After buying a radio station called WTIX FM in New Orleans, he set out to trump a rival top 20 station by adding another 20 songs and extending the radio music programming by an hour, producing the first top 40 sequence producing the first Top 40 sequence. With this, the Top 40 format was born. 
However, this playlist format came with its own set of complications. After a while, think about yourself, okay? After a while, the audience, once audiences grew tired of hearing the same songs in the same sequence over and over. Um, we can all do this for a little while, where we can listen to the same playlist over and over, but you get to a point where you're just completely overhearing it like that. So, a solution to this at the time was to use two separate boxes creating or containing index cards. The first box was filled with cards that represent five or six of the top songs at the time. This was named box A. The second box, box B, had the other 34 or so songs that were either uh, formerly in box A or new releases that were not as popular yet. Today, we'd call these boxes categories, okay, different music categories. Presenters were then made to take a card bearing in mind the name of the song from the front of each box or category in turn, and this would create a pseudo random sequence. Cards or songs were replaced into the, uh, into the back of the box after use. Almost like taking cards from board games, something you would do with 30 seconds or Trivial Pursuit, okay, that same idea. So how do you take it? You take a card from the front of the box. Once you've used it, you put them back in the back of the box. Depending on the size of box B, the repetition of songs would vary from listeners hearing them once every two hours for box A songs to once every four to five hours for the others. So quite a shift from how it started, right? Soon thereafter, almost all music radio stations started to adopt the same system of rotation of music, and radio stations with wider repertoires simply had more boxes or categories to choose from. This was how the music rotation and the compilation of music in music radio began. It's quite fascinating when you look at the history of how these things started. So that's how we got to music compiling. Now let's look at the different boxes before we carry on okay so different music boxes equals different music formats we often talk about radio as if it was a living thing that takes on a life outside of the people who work at the radio station so most radio stations fall under specific radio format categories that are used to track audiences and attract advertisers so that the station can build its media brand these categories are referred to as formats, as radio formats or programming formats. Some stations do run multiple genres, but most have a signature tone or a signature style. Radio formats are selected to appeal to particular demographics and niches, um, such as particular age groups or ethnicity. In the South African radio market, radio stations have license agreements with the Independent Communications Authority of South Africa, or as we know them, ICASA. So there are specific sets of conditions um, that have to be followed under these agreements or licenses. One of the conditions listed on these licensing agreements is the programming format, and this has to be adhered to at all times. When you're applying for a license with ICASA, you'll need to define a format and a target that you think fills a certain gap in the market, both for listeners and advertisers. The format needs to be designed to reach a specific defined niche segment of the listening population. If your, if your application is successful and the license is granted, then this becomes the programming format that has to be followed. ICASA does monitor whether radio stations in South Africa comply with their license formats. Because in South Africa, like I previously told you, you have two licenses, a class license and a spectrum license. So the spectrum license, once again, just your um, footprint in essence, the class license is where this would fall in. So your radio station format will be in your class license. Let's look at some of the formats that are frequently employed in South Africa. You need to keep in mind, though, that although a programming format has been defined in a licensing agreement, these formats morph and evolve over time as trends in lifestyle and culture change and emerge. 
which brings us to the first one under music formats. OK, so we'll look at music formats now, which is contemporary hit radio, so CHR. So what is a contemporary hit radio station? What would that entail? So contemporary hit radio or CHR is a format that focuses on playing the newest and the most popular music of the day. Originally known as the top 40, CHR will play all the biggest hits from pop, rock, hip hop, dance, R&B, etc. This is a really difficult format. So as we've said, it traditionally plays only the biggest hits and largest selling songs of the time. Okay, so it's described as uh, playing new cutting edge music, current hits and popular hits of the last six to 12 months. This fairly narrow assortment of songs or a playlist is designed to draw in teens and younger adults. The format's main demographic is people uh, between the age of 12 to 18. As you can see here in this um, image, that has been provided by the Broadcast Research Council of South Africa, aka the BRC. This format has evolved to a far broader reach. And this specific breakdown is the current breakdown of South Africa's only remaining CHR radio station, 5FM. Okay? 5FM in South Africa is the only remaining contemporary hit radio station. And their target, target audience, you'll see 15% of it is 20 to 25, 37% is 25 to 34, 23% from 35 to 49, and then 15% 50 plus years. Okay, so it's very broad in terms of listenership. This is an exceptionally difficult format to program for, um, as it doesn't describe a specific kind of genre or music. Instead, the format is meant to reflect the popular content at the time. This leads to a very diverse and often confusing sound. Um, a radio station adhering to a CHR format could in 2019 have their A playlist, so the most popular and frequent played songs, structured to include pop songs from Justin Bieber, followed by country music from Little Nas X and Billy Ray Cyrus, a dance track from Avicii, uh, a folk song from Billy Eilish, an R&B track by Lady Zamar, a hip hop track by DJ Khaled. These would all play in rotation and can lead to a very disjointed sound if you consider the tempo and the listening experience of each track. The, CH of, the CHR format then, um, the CHR format, therefore, has been abandoned by many, okay? Even if we look at the United States, there's only a few hundred CHR stations remaining in, across the whole United States, which comprises more than 300 million people. Those CHR stations that have remained successful now rely on big radio personalities and strong specialized music offerings. Okay, there's one such a station. Um, one such a station would be the BBC, would be BBC's Radio One, which is described as playing the best new music and supporting emerging talent. So according to the BBC, as well as Radio One's Live Lounge and the world famous Essential Mix, they're home to the UK's official chart and great DJs. Because of the diversity and the frequent style changes in popular music, many CHR radio stations around the world have repositioned themselves as formats that originate from the CHR format and represent a new wave of CHR programming. Okay? The first of these that we will be looking at is the urban CHR. Stations that are listed as urban are seen to represent are said to represent genres that reflect a large number of, of black music recording artists with such music such with music such as rap, hip hop, soul, and R and B. 
Um, music can't be strictly defined by a demographic because many ethnicities enjoy urban music. But the description here is intended to define where the original movement in this type of music came from. So urban CHR refers to urban stations that are aimed at a young audience. So again, if we look at 2019 as an example, because so again, if we look at 2019 as an example, because that's um, when the stats were done on these. A South African urban CHR station would likely be dominated by artists such as Cardi B, uh, Young Thug, Beyonce, DJ Khaled, Chance the Rapper, Logic, Nasty C, AKA, and Prince KB, just to name a few. In a South African context, um, these formats are more, are more popular than standard CHR stations. In the measuring cycle from October 2018 to March 2019, the BRC reported that YFM had 676,000 listeners per week. A national CHR radio station, 5FM, with a far larger geographical uh, distribution footprint, had only 674,000 listeners per week. Okay, And keep in mind, YFM is Gauteng based. This could be attributed to the challenges faced by the traditional CHR format, okay? Because, like I've said, it is much, it is more difficult to have a traditional CHR format versus an urban CHR format, for instance, okay? But like I said, okay, but again, urban format, YFM in South Africa. If we look at dance CHR next, um, often referred to simply as a dance station, their playlists will include a strong focus on high tempo electronic and dance hits, as well as dance remixes from popular songs. The format will be aimed at younger audiences. South Africa currently does not have any licensed FM dance stations, but an example would be Kiss FM and Energy FM um, in the United Kingdom. The music mix relies heavily on mixes from popular DJs with longer music sweeps than most CHR formats. These formats tend to involve less to um, these formats tend to involve less talking because the tracks are longer per play. Think about it. Dawn songs tend to be quite long versus the average radio station hit. The next one is alternative CHR. Um, more mainstream pop rock, rock, alternative hits. Uh, this is a format that's much, that's popular in Europe. And they'll play things like Panic at the Disco, The Lumineers, Billie Eilish, Of Monsters and Men. Also not one in South Africa. Then you get the alternative dance CHR, which is a mix between the previous two. And there's a Belgian radio station called Studio Brussel which is a good example of a successful alternative dance CHR format. Next, you get the language specific CHR stations. Um, these are CHR stations that play a mix of CHR hits from a particular language. So these are really big in South America, for instance. Again, we don't have um, stations like this in South Africa. So before you start thinking that our um, African language stations fits in here, they don't, okay? They fit in adult contemporary. Then you get other CHR formats. So um, normally these are hybrids from the ones that we've mentioned and they're caught, but their core target is, is always a young audience, and they rely heavily on topics of popular and celebrity uh, culture to drive their programming between and around the music that they play. Okay, the next one we're going to look at now is quite big in South Africa specifically, okay? And that is adult contemporary, which is AC. And adult contemporary uh, stations can also be referred to as the middle of the road stations, okay? These stations target people over the age of 30 and they play a mixture of contemporary hits 
from the past decade or two. These stations usually avoid new cutting edge music unless it fits into the rhythmic, into the rhythmic sound um, that match those of the decades in which they're focused. AC stations are in the business of providing the music that the audience enjoys, and they must therefore keep a close eye on the trends within their demographic groups, as well as on trends within the music industry. They need to balance new popular songs with classics that the audience will remember and enjoy. If the music is too old, the audience may feel disconnected from the station. And the same thing could happen if the music is too new and perhaps not yet popular with their listenership. Adult contemporary is the most difficult radio format to define because the phrase has been used to market everything from hits to soft pop. AC is for AC is for the rockers who have grown up, but have not un, um, outgrown the contemporary feel. Some prefer rock, some merely tolerate it. AC keeps their form changing. AC keeps them from changing their tastes just because they change a uh, demographic group. However, if these stations are programmed effectively, they can be highly successful. If we look at the um, share of audience simply in Gauteng in 2019, eight of the top 10 radio stations by, uh, at that point were AC radio stations. And if we look at those, the first one was Metro FM, which is a hot urban um, adult contemporary station. Secondly was Ecosi FM, which is a language specific AC. Third was the City FM, language specific AC. Number four was 947, which is a hot AC. Number five, Kai FM, which is a soft urban AC. Six, Jacaranda FM, soft AC. Number seven, Tobela FM, language specific AC. Number eight, YFM, urban CHR, okay? Number nine, Motsuberding FM, language specific AC. And number 10, Josie FM, soft urban AC. So mostly AC, adult contemporary stations. Nationally, almost all African language public broadcast services in South Africa are variations of the AC format. The biggest commercial stations also fall, um, also fall within the AC format, and these include Metro FM, KFM, Heart FM, Small 90.4 FM, 947, East Coast Radio, OFM, Gagazi FM, and Algoa FM. So just like with CHR, the AC station formats can be broken down into a couple of different ones, like we've just seen or heard. Um, in this case, hot AC, modern AC, soft AC, language specific AC, and urban AC. So the hot AC. Stations using a hot AC format have a slightly younger target audience than the traditional AC format. The, the music is new and cutting edge. Hot AC, is a, hot AC is a hybrid between pop and AC music um, and concentrates almost exclusively on current hits and music from the past 12 months, coupled with a small gold or um, older category that usually comes from a decade or two ago. Example is 947. Then you get modern AC, which is a hybrid between hot AC and a modern rock station. So campus, so, so TuxFM would, TuxFM used to be a modern AC station before they switched over to a CHR format um, as the community that they were serving became more diverse. Currently, there are no more Currently, there are no modern AC stations in South Africa, but this is a very popular format in the United States and Europe. If we look at soft AC, this format has become popular for playing beautiful music, which can be referred to as easy listening and is popular with the 35 year older, uh, five years and older age group. When the, uh, where the regular AC format plays music that is popular with a listenership, 
The age differences can be rather, rather broad as the group is not clearly defined as in a soft AC format. The playlist here may include songs that come from the 1960s onwards, so usually ballads or love songs. Overall, the music is low tempo. And an example of a soft AC station would be Jacaranda FM. Language specific AC stations are stations that play a mix of the AC hits from a particular language. Um, within our South African context, the SABC or the South African Broadcasting Corporation runs the 11 language specific services that are mainly programmed as AC stations. If we look at 2019 again, these stations made up eight of the top 10 radio stations in the country. So number one was Ikozi, um, which is an AL, ALS station, Umklobo Wenene, which is ALS. Number three, Metro FM is one of the two exceptions. Four, Tobela FM is um, ALS. Number five, Lacedi FM, ALS. Number six, Motswiding FM, ALS. Number seven, Aris Gia, um, ALS. Number eight, Gagazi FM, being the other uh, exception, part English, part Zulu. Number nine, Mungana Lonene is ALS. And number 10, Equiquezi Equi FM, which is ALS. And then the last format is Urban AC. This format is aimed at an older audience. Uh, music on these stations is more focused on the soul genre and the ballads and less on the hip hop music. Hot urban AC stations play current urban sounds such as hip hop, dance and trap. Um, the urban fo formats are popular in South Africa and so it's interesting. The urban formats are popular in South Africa, and so it's quite interesting to see the difference in the format grid of the urban specific radio stations compared, compared to the AC and um, talk radio stations. And an, exam and an example of a hot urban AC station in South Africa is Metro FM. So just quickly to recap, for CHR format, kind of music that they'll play, pop, rock, dance, it's current bass sellers. Some reliance on golden oldies, so older songs that are still popular. Some reliance on recurrence, so recent hits with lower on exposure. Um, stations will either lean toward dance music or be rock oriented. And the size of the library, normally between 350 to 500 songs. AC, adult contemporary. Pop music aimed at an adult at an adult audience, softer than CHR, um, heavy reliance on golden oldies and recurrence. Their catalog normally has between 500 and 2,000 songs. And within within AC, if we look at urban AC, uh, they'll play. And then we look at urban formats. Um, the music that they'll play is rhythm and blues, so R&B, rap, hip hop, dance, mellow, jazz fusion, and gospel slash inspirational. Stations will either lean toward playing music for adults or for teens slash young adults. And the size of the library will depend. Um, it'll depend on the extent to which the station caters for younger audiences. Um, where the catalogs are usually smaller than those aimed at older audiences. Okay. What I want you to do for me for homework is to compile a list of radio station songs that will range between 2010 and 2020 for playlisting. If we had to compile a CHR stations playlist, and an AC radio stations playlist, okay? So I want you to compile a playlist for both of these for me, um, which we'll use then in the next lesson. Okay, that then brings us to the end of this lecture. 
So we'll be continuing this journey of looking at formats by delving deeper into playlisting in the next class. So until then, bye for now.